millions in federal funding secured to help local projects in San Diego. And here to explain more, Representative Sarah Jacobs. Good morning. Good to see you in person. I know. It's so <laughs> great to be here in person with you. So uh, much to talk about. So many projects uh, that are going to get completed. And obviously, all of these need money. And you're getting money. That's right. Okay, tell us a little bit about some of these projects. What, what are they? So uh, we were able to secure in the final appropriations bill going through Congress right now a million dollars for a performance annex at the City Heights Library, half a million dollars for the, the uh, Linda Vista Library to build an early learning uh, patio, a million dollars for the county's project uh, to enable child care providers to expand and provide more slots, and uh, $25 million to help build the community mobility hub. Why are these projects uh, in particular so important to the community? When we were looking at what projects to push for, it was really important for me to focus on the ones that would most help the children and families in my district. And even before COVID, so many families were unable to afford or find childcare. And so that's really what we tried to focus on when we were submitting our projects for this final bill. Yeah, and a lot of these projects with the, with the library and uh, for the childcare for kids who have already been through and families who have already been through so much in the past, 16, 18 months or so. That's exactly right. Speaking of uh, children, Sarah, the migrant shelter, we talked about it this week at the convention center, is now closed. And we've reported that many of these children, they were placed with family here in the U.S. Is that what happened to all of the kids? So almost all of the kids who were in the shelter have been reunited with a family member. Um, they will now stay with that family member as they're going through the asylum process. Um, there were a few who had more complex cases or didn't have family who have either gone to one of the other shelters in the state or at one of the permanent uh, health and human services sites that they have uh, across the country. Okay, and speaking of the children, yesterday as well, we were telling everybody, if you open up your bank account today, there might be some extra money in there because this child tax credit all started yesterday. That's right, and I have to say, this is probably the thing I'm most proud of doing so far in my pretty short congressional tenure. Um, so we were able to create an expanded child tax credit through the American Rescue Plan, so families can get up to $300 a month through the end of the year. Uh, and uh, altogether, it will be $3,000 or $3,600 um, per child, depending on the age of your child and depending on your income. Okay. and and. Are there plans to make this permanent? Because I know that a lot of these plans that are out right now are to help people come out of the pandemic. Is this a long-term thing? So we are negotiating right now on these infrastructure packages. And what I'm pushing for is to make sure that this expanded child tax credit is permanent in that infrastructure package. Not only the higher number, but also these monthly payments that we know are gonna be so helpful to so many families. I mean, in my district alone, 80% of kids are in families eligible to receive some sort of tax credit through this. Uh, and I think it would be a real shame if we take across the country 5 million kids out of poverty this year, only to let them fall back into poverty next year. Some would argue, uh, Sarah, that by just giving money to families, it will discourage um, people from, from working. What do you say to them? I'm really glad you asked this because I know it's something people think about. There have been a couple of pilots around guaranteed income and cash payments to families across the country, including in Stockton. And what every single one of them found is that actually it makes parents work more because they're able to afford childcare. They are able to know someone is watching their kid. They're spending the money on childcare, on food, on groceries. I met with families uh, in South Bay yesterday to talk about what they're spending the money on. It's college funds, it's school supplies for their kids starting the new school year. Families are really struggling and this is uh, just the basic needs uh, that they're they need moving forward. All right, and finally, before we let you go um, about another stimulus uh, plan, anything else that are coming down possibly down the pipeline to help families? Yes, so we are right now negotiating on uh, what's being called the Build Back Bender agenda, which will include hard infrastructure and some of these programs like the child tax credit, like universal child care. Um, I'm pushing to make sure that we get this permanent child tax credit and enough money for child care in that final package, and I'm hopeful we'll be able to get that passed in the near future. Well, we appreciate you stopping by in person today. Uh, Sarah Jacobs, we appreciate it. Thank you. Good to see you. Of course. Good to see you, too.